one in six Nigerian children is suffering depression, according to UNICEF. What this means and how we can change it is our first major topic this morning. David Dole continues his money raising campaign, getting more than 180 million naira in two days. And Super Eagles coach Gennard Raw's job on the line, with many sports enthusiasts calling for his sack. Great to have you join us this morning on The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Uh, I am Osaugi Ogbonwa. Thanks for joining us. And I am Messi Boko. It's good to have you join us this morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So we set up uh, the conversation with a top trending as usual. Uh, David Doe has actually raised 184 million naira. I mean, it started like a joke, right? And the fact that uh, that video popped up where he talked about that we, we, we actually also lead by raising others. And then he said to his friends, or he put out a video saying, he's been assisting people all the while and he wants to find out how much of his friends, you know, would also support him. So. He decided that everyone, he put, he put out his account number, everyone should send a million naira, his friends, and he started calling them deliberately. And so far, I'm thinking that this money would actually go, uh, you know, more than 184 million. Uh, maybe the figure could probably just stop at this hour as we're speaking, because mm. it feels like a, a progress. But a lot of people have actually jumped on this. I mean, some people have criticized this. Others have actually appraised this. I mean, there's so much conversation surrounding. David O seemed to be, you know, the conversation on the internet right now and everywhere. Everyone's talking about David O. Everybody's also asking for money. Send 150, send 100. I want to try my friends, you know, Peace Square. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the Peace Square has actually jumped on it. Uh, you also have different persons saying, oh, I want to, you know, start this challenge and all of that. Yeah. But, um, well, like you said, it started, you know, like a joke, you know, and I'm sure he didn't even expect that this is how it would turn out. Mm. He probably just started it as, you know, something to play around with, you know. Um, asked that uh, people that he had made happy or people he had made music with um, or giving hits um, should, you know, send in a, a millionaire. And, you know, I think it started with, um, in a, a 10 minutes or so, he had raised about five millionaire, you know, and then it became, you know, the next big thing. And everybody started to throw money into that account. He posted his account on, on uh, Twitter also and got a lot of people then sending him money um, until it got to, you know, 40 million. Next it was 50, 60, you know, 80, 100. Um, and then he said, oh, let's hit 200, you know, and it just continued. And um, I think he also received uh, money from other, you know, um, artists outside Nigeria. Um, There's also a video of a guy that he met in the, in the mall in, in Dubai, Dubai that also gave him... 1.6 uh, million. Um, yeah, 1.6 million, you know, 10,000 dirham. Um, so it's, it's very, you know, very interesting. You know, some people have said it's a, a social experiment. You know, some even said that maybe it's a, a campaign by the bank, you know, that he's partnering with. You know, but apparently it's not because the bank also, you know, sent him, you know, one million naira. And others um, are saying that he, it's possible that he's broke. No, absolutely not. Um, absolutely not. So I, I, I think it's really just, it started as a joke, you know, and he has gone on to take advantage of, you know, all of it. Shame on those who decided that they also want to feed off you know, the popularity of this, you know, the Big Brother Ninja winner and, uh, of course, the, the twins that decided to come together after five years. And the first thing that they decided to do after coming back together is to ask for their own, you know, donations and their own support. So I'm um, thinking very, that... Very, very depressing. Yeah, I'm thinking that a lot of persons who are jumping on this uh, campaign right now will not get the kind of support David is getting. Uh, no, absolutely I just don't not. know why. Absolutely I don't know, not. but so, they're never going to get so, it. So, so this is what I think happened, you know, and I think it's a thing that happens with a lot of, in a lot of Nigeria, a lot of societies, including Nigeria. The last time we had this type of donations to any cause was the NSAS protest, um, when the Feminist Coalition was, of course, you know, collecting donations from across Nigeria and across the world. Um, Africans in that, Nigerians in diaspora and the likes, and they raised, you know, more than 100 million, I believe. Um, that's the last time we saw any, okay, maybe I'm, I'm mistaken, but it was a lot of money. Um, but that's the last time we saw anything, you know, of this sort. So I think it's really just the, the Nigerian character of wanting to be associated with wealth or wanting to be asso associated with popularity. And that's really what has pushed a lot of people to put in their one million, their two millions, their, their five millions, maybe even, you know, Femi Otella also jumped on it, you know, and sent money according to Davido. So, you know, because Davido, Davido calls them out now. He, he calls yeah, them out. Yeah, you know, but you can also ignore. 
you know, and, and because, I mean, he's rich, so it's not by force that you send. But I think it's really just the thing, this is the new trend, everybody, what, everybody wants to get on it. Um, and so they will go ahead and, and send money, which is a beautiful thing. Um, and I, I like the fact that, you know, this happened, you know, and, and because I've also I've seen all the conversations that say, this means that when Nigerians are serious about, you know, donating to a cause, they really will. You just have to be able to trigger their senses enough. Um, and so every other person who thinks that, you know, this might be a way to raise funds, don't break your own heart, you know, except you are sure that you can trigger Nigerians and the sense of Nigerians in, enough, um, maybe through propaganda or some other, you know, way, you will not get the, this amount of support. So, so for those who are actually jumping, this is my advice. I'm thinking at this point in time, you can't really get the same attention David was getting. You, you probably will not. just need to wait for another time. Yeah, you, you, you absolutely know, something will not. And before you put that out. But however, um, there's something that um, <coughs> Pete Adoche's son actually said. He, he talked about crowdfunding for the election. For politics, yes. Yeah, for politics, especially for you know young persons who are vying for political office. I, I really do not know how that would actually pan out if anyone comes out to say, okay, I'm vying for political office and then I want you to, put, you know, I want to raise money. I don't know if people would, you know, if that would really get that um, I think, I think there that will kind be, of support. There will be certain people that will get some level of support. It really depends on how the people see you and how much That's you're able point. to trigger their senses enough. Mm -hmm. um, because this one now... Yes, people would argue that, oh, you know, and, and all those um, 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 William Shakespeare's and the likes that are said to create uh, motivational quotes around this and saying, oh, you know, be a good person, people will always come up for you, stop it. Um, <laughs> there, uh, there, is, there is that narrative that because of how much he has helped people, and I agree with that, that he's been, he's been a David very, very has a good heart. great person. He's a good, he has a good heart. Um, so because of that, that's why he's gotten this level of support. But I feel that aside that, there is other people who don't necessarily, who can't necessarily say that oh, they've benefited anything from him personally, but they just want to be a part of the crowd that are donating. They want to, their names to be flashed on his Insta story that, oh, this person sent one million, this person sent two million, and that's the reason that they're jumping on it. Um, if you try that with politics, a lot of those people don't care. They wouldn't want to know, you know, who is running for politics because that is not, a, it's not interesting, you know. It doesn't give them popularity. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, there's a particular endorphin or something in the body that it excites. It doesn't give them that. And so, um, Peter, um, you like Doce, I'm sorry, you wouldn't, I'm, I don't think you would get this level of support. But there's <laughs> a way he, that he do you, can... Do you think he was saying that because, you know, paraventure... Yeah, uh, I, I think that's what he was, he was, he was looking for. He towards. has intentions yeah. of yeah, he, he probably asking was. Nigerians to support him. Yeah, you know, and I would love if we get there. As a country, I would love if we have private citizens decide that they want to run for election, not necessarily with any of the major parties, and they need support. And Nigerians actually come out to support them because since they supported the NSARS protest, with all those funds, and they were able to pull up this amount of money with their video, this is going to 200 million now, then any political uh, politician can be supported. Any young Nigerian can be supported. You just need to trigger Nigerians enough because a lot of people would see a Banky W decide to run and they'll t turn their faces the other way because, eh, okay, you'll be fine. But this one, now, they know the video is fine. They know he's rich. They know he doesn't necessarily need this money, but they would still go ahead and donate. I hope. No, 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 you know, with the politics uh, issue, I think that we are, I, I know some persons who've actually practiced, you know, crowdfunding when they are vying for political office, but it doesn't really have that, like you have mentioned, because it doesn't have anything to excite them. And what would they benefit at the end of the, the, the popularity and what have you? Uh, but the point is, if you look at, you know, I mean, the likes of Barack Obama at the time, you know, he pr probably, you know, asked uh, during his campaign period, um, he, he solicited for support. And then, yeah. you know, that kind of support will come. But however, let's see, um, you know, how things actually pan yeah. out. Their system is totally different um, over there anyway. Um, they would be able to raise funds. You know, he also wouldn't necessarily raise funds from... Anyway, it's a totally different system in the, in the U.S., you know, compared to it here in Nigeria. And the amount of money that a politician needs here to win an election, it would take a lot more than crowdfunding to pull that amount of money. 180 million would not win any election in Nigeria, except you are you know, running for election at the very, very smallest level. To be governor, I'm sure you need more than 180 million or 200 million naira. And I don't know the crowd that's going to give that any person that one, except, you know, you are Speedy Possible. Darlington. There's um, money in this or, country. Or somebody. Maybe Speedy, Speedy <laughs> will be able to. Anyway. Speedy? <laughs>
absolutely. Let's, let's, let's move away yeah. from that conversation. Let, let's talk about a, a girl. Um, I think it was sometime this week we spoke about sexual harassment in the workplace. Mm. Um, we're going to be talking about sexual harassment again, but this time on the road. A young lady shared her story yesterday on social media of um, a very unfortunate incident that she, you know, sadly was a victim. She was on the streets of Lagos one morning uh, trying to get to work. Um, SUV pulled up. It was a rainy morning in Lagos. Um, an SUV pulled off, um, up and, of course, offered her a ride. She innocently accepted and uh, got into you know, the vehicle from Maryland bus stop to Ojota. She said it was a very, very short ride. But immediately she got into the car. Uh, the doors were pinned. And uh, the man who was driving this vehicle then immediately you know, started talking um, about how the weather gets him excited. Pretty much the same thing with the tech guy saying, you know, marijuana gets him excited in a particular way and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, next thing he brings out his um, the penis, you know, right there in the car and is, you know, asking that she touches him, asking that she helps him, you know, play with it, you know, and some, and some you know, nonsense like that. She eventually survived that incident, got out of the vehicle, and then, of course, a couple of days later, because she knew that she needed some evidence and some information to be able to get this person, um, or to shame this person for his acts, you know, she then got into a WhatsApp conversation with him, because they exchanged numbers, got, in, got into a WhatsApp conversation with him. He eventually confessed to the crimes in the WhatsApp conversation. They got a, you know, she also got a phone call, recorded a phone call, and then put all the information out on social media. Um, I've always believed that lack of sexual control will ruin anybody mm. mostly men and okay. i think that's what they may need to learn from some of all these things no so i, I would start off on that, that particular note that you started off the other day when we talked about this men need to do more some men need to do better and that's where it is now self-control is very very i mean not necessarily limited to you know sex but we should be able to have self-control as human beings and that's why we're not zombies uh, we should be able to have that kind of self-control it's very very scary it's really really uh, sad that you know we're no longer safe in the space again i mean how can that really happen at the point in time i'm really glad that nothing really happened to her but like she yes. mentioned um she's talking about the fact that she's traumatized because it can be scary i mean the fact that you don't know what will happen to you he probably could have raped her in, in the vehicle and some people would say oh so why did you you know why did you, you get in the vehicle you know, why did you get in the vehicle yeah. but if you look at the condition and especially if you live in Lagos, it can be very very yeah. frustrating at a time but um the, the word will be we can do better as as a people and the fact that he said, you know, he just wanted to satisfy, really, yeah. at the time. I'm sure he probably has a wife, or if, you, if he's not married, he probably would have a girlfriend somewhere. And you know that there are a lot of persons that you can have consenting sex with. So, you know, I, I also think that, you know, we need to go beyond just shaming these people. I agree with publicly shaming them. But besides that, you know, I think that, that the laws need to work better with these type of incidents. You know, where the person who sexually assaults, sexually harasses somehow, somewhere. And, and you know, the idea of sexual harassment is not just physical. Because that's the idea that a lot of Nigerian men have. That as long as you didn't physically assault and rape, you know, a person, then it's not necessarily sexual, um, you know, assault. But I think that idea needs to be changed, and more men need to do better. We need to go beyond just shaming these people. The law needs to actually take its cause in situations like this, and you know, make them pay um, for making, of course, you know. I don't, it breaks no, my but heart. You, you know, but, you know, but you know that it's going to be very difficult for us to get yes, to that will. point because uh, we're still um, struggling with the issue of uh, having to sort out the issue of rape and all of that harassment. I I'm sure there's a very, uh, there's a popular case that we had to deal with in Nigeria and I'm sure that um, we followed up on that particular story where you would now begin to ask if there was penetration because usually right. yeah. um, we always want to look at rape at, at the point where there's penetration. But you see, when you begin to touch the private parts, I feel like a lot of people outside of this country would probably be in jail I mean a lot of times because we do not know how to respect people's you know uh, very private space yeah, because so we get into that private space enough punishment for it uh, well so we get into that private space and then we constantly think that sexual harassment is just limited to having that penetration yeah. and, and, and that's it taken, forcefully you know, taken yeah, and well. then that's why it's rape but you know for, from the part that you begin to touch the sensitive part of the body's private part and, of course, and then you begin to encroach it is really, really sad. Public but, but, display but, of nudity also, that's sexual harassment. And, and you know, it, it needs to be told to a lot of people. Um, sadly, or rather, you know, good thing is that she got out of this experience without, you know, being harmed or without being hurt. Um, but once again, aside publicly shaming this man, there needs to be more done, you know, to make a lot of Nigerian men 
Um, I can't say all men because I know there's a lot of you know responsible yeah, men out course. there that would never do that. So what a lot of Nigerian men need to do better and need to be taught to do better if they have to be taught to do better. And, that, and this should be you know a wake up call to all of the organisation, non governmental organisation, government agencies, individuals, yeah. you know religious leaders and what have you. We need to create the awareness. We need to begin to understand that. Yes, sexual harassment is not good. It is a crime. And, um, you know, as long as we say, oh, there are no stipulated laws, because every other time the excuse will be, oh, there are no laws for all of that. But we need to create the awareness. There's a lot Absolutely. of work that needs to be done. I've also uh, seen, I'm sure you must have also heard those stories of uh, getting in an Uber, you know, and he brings out his penis while he's, he's driving. There's a couple of those stories that I've, I've seen on, um, on social media also. You know, of a young lady getting in, ordering an Uber, she gets into the, you know, the back seat. And, you know, I've probably seen that like four or five, you know, I mean, I've also seen and that he brings a, out his penis right there in the car while he's driving and, you know, starts playing. It's, it's so disgusting. Um, yesterday, I also saw a video of an of a Uber driver who picked up a lady and while they were driving, he was watching porn on his phone. The screen was right there. You know, the, the place that they hang the screen on the, on the, you know, where the AC vents are. It was right there and he was watching porn while they were driving. These are all just very, very insane things that you wouldn't expect, you know, from, you know, a sane society. But yes, I understand that there are animals, you know, amongst us. Those people need to be taught a lesson so that we have a safer environment for women and for men. Of course but mostly for women, um, because these cases mostly affect women. We need to do what we must do as a society to ensure that we have a safer um, you know, space for women. Women need to be safe going out. They need to be safe coming home. They need to be safe entering public transport. They need to be safe taking you know, um, 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 uh, rides in, a, in any part of uh, the country. Finally, sadly, this is an Edo state, so nobody would believe when we try to defend Edo people and say we're not necessarily um, witches. But <laughs> This Where did that come from? <laughs> when I saw the story yesterday, <laughs> when I saw the story yesterday, and I was sharing with friends, you know, I, the caption I wrote was sadly once again Edo State. But anyway, in Edo State, a woman was taken to the mortuary, of course, you know, by her family after being, you know, according to them, uh, confirmed dead. She got to the mortuary, and just when the mortuary staff were about attending to her, she woke up. And this happened in Edo State. Um, and, uh, of course, got, you know, the whole place, you know, uh, running Helter Skelter. Um, sadly, once again, it happened in Edo State, but it doesn't define who we are, okay? She probably was just taking a little nap um, and decided, you know, it was time for her to wake up. <laughs> but on a serious note, you know, we actually had this conversation, you know, of camera. And one of the things we talked about is the fact that at what point do you say... Because I, I was, I'm of the opinion that, you know, we should be able to... Uh, allow some people sometimes you hear someone's passed out but maybe we could just you know allow them for a bit before we could take them to the because morgue and all of that uh, not that they were going to change your mind but in this particular case uh, the report is that the family actually took her to the morgue was well, she declared yes. dead by, by the family i guess so so, so, so that's, she, that shouldn't be that shouldn't be it means she wasn't declared dead by you know a medical practitioner or yes. a doctor or however it was she was declared dead by members of a family and that's uh, you know on profession totally unacceptable because you don't know when someone is dead uh, you know a, a professional should be able to to declare someone and even at that i'm saying let's just give them you know a few more minutes or an hour maybe they probably come back i don't know don't look at me like that <laughs> You know, I will simply just say there's a lot that needs to be done, you know, with um, information concerning, you know, public health, you know, and, you know, the Nigerians' reaction to certain things. Sadly, we don't have ambulances because in, you know, oh, another we society... Few, we, we do have a few. Of the ambulances we have in Nigeria have to carry dead bodies, not to rescue. Okay. Um, in other um, societies, you would expect that when there is a medical emergency, when a person collapses, when a person is unconscious, you will call the ambulance. Uh, you call the police, you call 911, well, whichever one you can call in Nigeria. They get to the scene, they attend to the person. If the person is confirmed dead at the scene, then they take the person to the mortuary. A man or woman collapses in Nigeria, they take, check your nose, there's no air coming out, your stomach is not going up and down, they say she's dead. <laughs> they take her immediately 
to the morgue, <laughs> you know, and then she wakes up. That's exactly, I'm, I'm thinking that's what played out here. You, you know, and it could also be the fact that you have a lot of persons. I mean, fa family members are not even like here. They're waiting for you to just die. To die. <laughs> or you probably just had an opportunity to say <laughs> you're dead. But that's on a lighter note. The yeah. point is, we need to, you know, follow uh, best practice before we actually Absolutely. go to the morgue. Absolutely. Because this could, could be anything. I'm not a medical professional, but I'm sure that doctors would know better um, what could happen and, you know, that would keep a person unconscious for a bit. And eventually they wake up. Um, all the, um, the defibrillators that the ambulances use. I'm sure that if, they, if there was a proper ambulance, she would have woken up at home. Um, but there wasn't. And so they simply took her to the hospital by themselves because, well, well she's not breathing, so she's she probably dead. Um, I remember also in the NSAR's report, there was um, one of the pe people who was um, interviewed who was pronounced dead. He was taken away with other bodies, according to his story. He was taken away with other, you know, dead bodies, you know, by the people who took the dead bodies away from the toll gates. Eventually woke up you know, um, um, later. So these are examples of times when people really can be unconscious and seem like they're, you know, they've passed on. But if you would simply just wait for a medical professional uh, to ensure that they are, you know, dead before pronouncing them dead and then taking them to the morgue, um, those processes are really what, that, and I can imagine that there's been other situations where people get But buried. what if it was a miracle? A miracle? Mm -hmm. oh, Miracles uh, still happen. No, uh, yeah, right. In Benin. <laughs> 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 okay. Anyway, those are our top trending stories this morning. We'll take a short break when we come back off the press kicks off where we share with you the major stories making headlines across Nigeria this morning. Good morning once again. <laughs>